What does each championship club need to fix this summer? What do they need to address that went wrong last season? In today's video, we're going to go ahead and talk about it. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. And as always, if you do want to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. But without any further ado, let's jump in. With Birmingham, I'm going to say work on their build-up play. They scored just over one goal per game last season, 47 in the championship. And I definitely think that some sense could be seen by rejuvenating their forward options. Last season in the championship, Blues also had the second worst pass accuracy in the league that being the case with a lot of you know balls going long and things like that but I do feel as if that's an area they can look to improve to jump onto that next level what Blackburn need to fix is they need some bounce back ability next season it was quite remarkable the record that Blackburn had when they take a lead in the match they go on to win it and if they'd fall behind they go on to lose it pretty much without fail in fact last season Blackburn only came back from behind once to win a match which is absolutely crazy and being the determining factor between between making the top six or falling short again. Something like that absolutely needs to be addressed. Bristol City need to get better from outside the box next season. They only scored one goal from open play outside the box in the championship last time around, which was the fewest of any championship clubs. They ranked 23rd in the championship for shots taken outside the box as well. In and around the box with cutbacks and things like that, Bristol City do tend to be quite decent. It's where a lot of their chances come from, but adding another dynamic into their game, which could make them a little bit more unpredictable predictable I think will be a massive bonus. With Cardiff, it's quite obvious they need to address their goal scoring issues. They only scored 41 goals in the league last season. That was the second fewest in the championship, only behind Wigan. Now, they have added to their forward line. Very much excited to see how Yaku Mate gets on at Cardiff. If he can keep himself fit, maybe he's the answer to that goal scoring problem. A real weakness for Coventry last season was scoring from set piece situations. Now, they seem to be decent at defending them, but it, when it came to putting the ball in the back of the net themselves from these sort of areas, they weren't great. It. They only scored from seven set piece situations last season, which was the fewest of any championship club. Thinking about how deadly they can be on transitions and from open play, adding that other dynamic of being a threat from set pieces could take them to another level. When it comes to Huddersfield, they just need to start making some moves in this transfer window for me. A few areas of their squad still need to be addressed, but as of recording, they're one of just three championship clubs who are yet to sign anyone in this transfer window. Sure, they will have some transfer dealings up their sleeve but yeah they need to get going sooner rather than later. Defensively Hull really improved in the second half of last season under Liam Rossini and where I feel they can go one step further is just to fine tune themselves in the attacking third and find where the regular source of goals is going to come from. Now Oscar Stupinan was their top scorer last season, scored 12 league goals but only scored one in his last 11 matches and was a little bit of a striker who could blow hot and cold. Still think there are a few question marks over the likes of Liam Delap after his loan spells last season as well and still over Connolly um, after his injury record so finding out who Hull can properly pin their hat on to be that main guy next season I think it's going to be an interesting one I'm sure we'll know more as pre-season goes on. With Ipswich at the moment I really don't think a lot needs to be fixed at that club they're a team who are on the up at the moment a good up and coming coach with uh, ownership model which is willing to go ahead and back him they've already added to their squad so far this window and I'm sure they'll continue to go ahead and do that. Still got a few positions where they need to add to, but I think the biggest thing for Ipswich this season will probably just be managing expectations, actually. Making sure that those don't hamper their progress somehow and you know bleed into the players' thoughts and things like that. Other than that, I think that Ipswich are set for a good season. Leeds United, I think it's definitely a case of addressing their defensive deficiencies. Last season in the Premier League, they conceded 78 goals, which was the most in the Premier League. Daniel Farker, on top of that, is quite an attack-minded manager as we've seen by his Norwich side in the past. And looking over that lead squad right now, I do think that for the championship, there is a lot of goals to be had there, especially with some of their creative players if they do keep them around. The problem then may come with, will their defensive structure let them down again? It's going to be on Fark to go ahead and get that up and shaped up to scratch. Quite a similar story for Leicester at the moment as well. I feel like they need to sort out their goalkeeping situation as soon as possible. Moreska picks his number one and that's who they're going to stick with. It was a massive problem for Leicester last season in the Premier League where they, you know, they had lost Kasper Schmeichel in pre-season, then they started the season with Danny Ward. He didn't really do very well. Brought in Daniel Everson towards the end who, you know, me as a Preston fan I do rate very highly and I actually think for Championship football he would be more than good enough for Leicester. The only doubt 
doubt I'd have over a goalkeeper like Iverson is, is he a Maresca type player? Distribution has always been a little bit of a weak point for Iverson. I saw that at Preston because in terms of a shot stopper, I think he would be one of the best in the division. But if Maresca wants that sweeper keeper type to fit in with his philosophy, that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Middlesbrough have been making quite a lot of moves in the transfer market recently. Certainly a lot of players who are going to add a lot of value in years to come. Where do they need to address and improve? Well, it's probably replacing the productivity that the likes of Giles, Archer and Ramsey delivered last season. While the incomings at Borough have been very exciting so far, I think a lot of them are tipped to make a greater impact over the next few years rather than coming straight into that starting 11 and making things happen for them. And once again, for Middlesbrough, the loan market could be very important. Millwall feel like they just need to be that little bit more clinical next season. They had a conversion rate of just 7% in the championship last season, which actually made them the fourth least clinical side in the championship. They actually tended to create a decent amount of chances, but more often than not, would squander a few of them. Will Kevin Nisbet be the player to go ahead and fix that ratio we'll have to wait and see with Norwich I feel it is a case of finding that consistent source of goals particularly without Timu Puki next season they've of course brought in um, Ashley Barnes from Burnley but I feel as if he's going to be a little bit more of a link man rather than someone who's scoring you know 15 goals plus we saw the role he played um, at Burnley last season under Vincent Company, and I can see him filling a similar role in that Norwich side next season. Goals were a little bit of a problem for Norwich at the back end of last season as well. In their final 11 matches of the season, they only scored more than one goal on one occasion and that just can't be the case next season. Plymouth, I think they've started their transfer business pretty positively so far. Where they can still improve though is I think they still need a creative midfielder or two and some more options at the top end of the pitch. Six players scored six or more goals for Plymouth in League one last season and of those six players five of them are no longer at the club so that's an obvious area where they need to address with Preston, our problems last season definitely were in the final third of the pitch. We need to score more goals next season. Last year in the Championship, we averaged less than a goal per game and no player for us got into double figures in terms of goal scored and that absolutely needs to be addressed. Need to add to our striker department still with the likes of Chad Evans and Emil Reese both set to miss the start of the season. We've added to our creative options in midfield with Mads Froika Jensen coming in and Dwayne Holmes as well, but we're going to need another striker or two to be on the end of those chances. QPR, it's definitely a question of tightening things up at the back, particularly in the first half an hour of matches when they have been particularly susceptible. Um, last season especially, they conceded 71 goals in the last championship campaign, which was the second worst defensive record. Only Blackpool conceded more goals than they did. Obviously, Sene Dieng has since departed. Rob Dickey's gone out as well, so it is going to be an overhaul of that back line, and time will tell if they do improve on that. When it comes to Rotherham, I feel like they need to shoot a little bit more and have that little bit more creativity in their side next season to move on to that next level. They only averaged 8.8 .8 shots per game in the championship last season, which was the fewest in the championship. They also had the second lowest XG in the league, only behind Reading, so those are areas where they can look to improve. Along with that, their away form as well. I think if Rotherham want to move on to that next level next season, their home form was typically quite solid, but they only won two matches on the road last season, which is something that can be looked into. Sheffield Wednesday, we spoke about it quite a bit on the channel so far, but they need to start recruiting. Been quite a slow start to this window so far, as of recording, Reese James being their only sign, and of course they had him on loan last season. Also feel as if they need to work on lowering the average age of that squad, currently over the 28 mark, which does rank them as one of the older squads in the league, and I do feel as if with a few younger and upcoming stars added to that mix, then Sheffield Wednesday could be in for a good season. Southampton, their main issue last season really originated from creativity. Whether or not players stepping down to the championship will allow them to thrive a little bit more, we'll have to wait and see. Only Wolves had a lower XG in the Premier League last season than Southampton did. With how Russell Martin's going to play with the Southampton side, very possession-orientated, I still feel as if 
another player or two is perhaps needed to completely make that system click. A player in midfield perhaps who can pick that killer pass in the final third. Perhaps that player is already at the club and we'll see more of them in the championship this season and they'll have a bigger platform to thrive in the championship. But I still feel as if a player or two is needed to make that system click. With Stoke, they absolutely need to fix their home form for next season. It was a real issue last time. They only picked up 23 points at home last season, an average of one point per game, which which isn't great for a side looking to kick on to that next level. In fact, only Wigan picked up fewer points in home matches than Stoke did last season, which is a major issue. With Sunderland last season, conceding goals late on was a little bit of an issue for them. Almost a quarter of the goals that Sunderland conceded in the Championship last season came in the last 15 minutes of the match, which is quite high comparatively to a lot of other Championship clubs. Along with that, there's also a case that Sunderland struggled to deal with aerial battles you know, set piece situations at the back end of last season with key injuries in defence and that sort of thing. Only Swansea won less aerial duels per 90 last season than that Sunderland side did. So adding a bit of height and physicality important. Where can Swansea improve under Michael Duff? Definitely improving from set piece situations. It was a weakness under Russell Martin, particularly defending from those set pieces. Swansea, obviously a very good technical side under Martin, looked to have a lot of the ball, but when it was up in the air and up against them, they did particularly struggle. They can conceded from 19 set piece situations last season which was the second most in the championship and thinking how leaky they were from those positions and how many points that actually cost them in the end. Where can Watford improve? Well I feel like they just need to back a process with Valor and Ishmael. They've not gone ahead and done that for God knows how long now where they have stuck to a recruitment plan, what the manager wants and actually allow him that little bit of time to make things click and fall into place because I don't necessarily think that it will be a lightning start under Ishmael with how much of a transition the football's going to be for Watford next season. But give it a bit of time and who knows where they could go. West Brom just need to become a little bit more clutch, I feel like. They need to score more goal goals late on. In the final 15 minutes of football matches last season, West Brom only scored five goals, with only one of those goals coming after the 90-minute mark. That is the fewest of any championship club last season and so we all know that when things get tight towards the end of the season those defining moments late on in matches can absolutely make or break your season and West Brom didn't have many of those moments last year but guys there we have it there's my current thinking with every championship club where they can look to improve next season do let me know your thoughts on those shouts down below apart from that though guys that will now wrap it up for today's video thank you very much for tuning in if you did go and enjoy make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content and I'll see you all in the next one.